here is the overview. First of all, I'm Steve Grubbs, uh, CEO and uh, founder of Victory XR. We are a company that's been producing 3D spatial uh, learning products since 2016. Mostly uh, we have deployed in the past through virtual reality headsets, and we still do. We have a great, great platform called VXR Labs. But with the advent of AI, we have also added to our hardware lineup uh, Chrome browsers and PCs so that you can access these products with or without a, a VR headset. So our belief is that in most cases, the immersive nature of virtual reality headsets, the ability to be hands-on makes a big difference and really allows learning to be elevated. But there's certain use cases where it, it's less important. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So uh, let's think about one of the challenges in learning in healthcare. And that is time and interaction with patients. Now, we are the first ones to admit there's no substitute for uh, interacting with, with real human beings to the extent that as a, as a student, you have the opportunity to interact at, at a clinic or in some other way with, with a real patient. Obviously, that's ideal. But the real world gives us some, some other answers, and that is that students need to learn to interact with patients in, in ways that um, are not always, it's not always possible to have a, a real human or a real patient there. And so, you know, sometimes it's uh, some clinical, sometimes it's just in-class assignments. So we're going to talk about how uh, universities, some of our clients that we're working with are addressing these problems, how affordable it is, and, and how you have the ability to build your own AI 3D patient sims. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you a patient sim in just a moment, uh, one built in cooperation with Seton Hall University, a great American university. Uh, but I, I want you to understand the purpose and the features that are included with this. So first of all, um, you will see a patient sitting on a Chrome browser and as a student, you can interact with this patient. You can interact either by speaking to the patient or in many cases, by typing something into the, uh, in, into the, uh, uh, the, the screen. In this case, I'm gonna try to speak with the patient. Sometimes on these webinars, it's a little bit clunky, uh, but if, if when you want to try this yourself, we're going to push you a link to try it yourself and, and you'll see that it's, uh, it's, it's pretty smooth to have this two-way conversation. So the, the student that you're going to see, the patient you're going to see, is a patient in a class that is um, uh, a counseling and therapy class. And uh, Tyler Goodman, I just want you to know that I received your message. Thank you for that. Um, and so this is a, a patient sim in a counseling or therapy class. The student, the patient, has recently been diagnosed with MS, which when you're 21 is, is a pretty devastating diagnosis. And so uh, we're going to have the opportunity to have a conversation with this patient. Now, I am playing the role of the student in the therapy class, in the counseling class. And so this is the simulation of an online therapy session. So, so you're a remote patient, you come into Zoom or Google Meets or whatever tool you might be using, and, and you're having this conversation. So what we're going to do then is, for anybody on this call, we're going to push you the link of both um, the Seton Hall therapy patient and then also Johnny Appleseed. And um, by doing so, you will be able to go in and have your own conversations with them. In the meantime, I am going to make a small pivot and show you the videos of these real quick. So let me pull this up. So the first video I'm going to share is a video on Johnny Appleseed. So um, with Johnny Appleseed, 
what I chose to do was to create my own patient. So I went into a, the, the intake form that I'll show you here in just a moment. And I made some decisions about the characteristics of this patient. Now, our patient in this case is uh, Johnny Appleseed. He has obsessive compulsive disorder. He cannot stop planting um, see, trees. And uh, he's, he's become obsessed with this. And so I'm going to go ahead and share that out, that share the video out right now. And you can take a look at that. Okay. You should be able to see this now. And I'm going to go ahead and show this video. Hey, Johnny. How are you feeling today? Hello, Doc. I'm doing all right, thanks. Been keeping busy with my trees, you know how it is. How about you? Oh, I'm fine. Thank you for asking. Can you tell me more about this compulsion to check your saplings? It's like I can't help it. I feel this deep responsibility to check on them, like they're depending on me. That is certainly an interesting after effect of the head injury. Yeah, it seems that way. Ever since that injury, the need to plant and take care of these apple trees has just stuck with me. Do you feel like we might need to up your dose on your medication? I'm not sure, Doc. I feel like the medication helps, but the urge to plant is always there. You know, Johnny, as long as it's not interfering with your overall day-to-day, -day, then I think it's fine. I appreciate that, Doc. Honestly, planting those trees keeps me busy and gives me a sense of purpose. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing now. Um, so what you see from that video is that uh, I was able, and, and that to create Johnny Appleseed, and that conversation could have gone on and on for a lot longer than our, our little demo video. But I was able to create Johnny Appleseed in less than 20 minutes. Now, granted, I'm not a healthcare professional, not a psychologist, as much as you may think I, I play one in the company. Um, but but by doing some very simple things that I'm going to show you next allowed me to create this patient sim. I was able to enter in background information. I went and Googled obsessive compulsive disorder. So I, I knew what that was all about. And, and we were able to set up what the patient would say. And, and I'm just going to interview Tyler Goodman real quick or Theo, maybe both. Um, Theo or Tyler. I'm going to show the intake form in just a moment. And, and this intake form is going to become a, a do-it-yourself tool within a few weeks, I know. But when the user is creating their own personality, not only can I put the information in their brain about their background and their condition and their symptoms, but uh, how is it that I can also make it say something within the the whole experience that we want it to say tyler or theo would one of you take that you're talking about something like specific yeah something specific that we want to make sure that they say somewhere in the responses yeah Talk so we can it. we can have um specific events tied into your ai's build um so that you know at a given moment during the conversation or maybe it's uh prompted to do so with specific phrasing or keywords um, it can say something uh, specific that you want him to say. So, for example, uh, Seton Hall um, had a patient they wanted us to build. And at some point in the conversation, they wanted the patient to mention uh, being worried about ending up in a wheelchair due to their condition. Um, and so I believe for them specifically, we had it happen randomly at some point in the conversation but we can make it more specific uh so if the student were to say uh ask them a certain question they would respond in a specific manner that we can also do that okay interesting well i'm going to go ahead and share out the intake form right now so people can see it and i'm going to walk through how i built johnny appleseed all right so you can see, so what you're seeing here is an intake form. And, and this, you're going to answer questions. And from this, uh, you get a patient. 
currently there is a little bit of back end work that we help with to make all of this come alive by september we will be out of the picture completely when you fill in the intake form when you fill in the uh the, the build your own tool the do it yourself tool it will automatically generate um the the johnny apple seed or whatever patient that you want for you know it could be uh you could be an orthopedic surgeon you could be a dermatologist you could be a chiropractor all of these require patient interaction so so we start by asking uh just the basics so we know who we're dealing with here but this is the real magic is when the customization comes in so first you need to you'll need to name your ai patient and it could be a first name um could be a first name and a last name i obviously named mine johnny appleseed and then you need to choose a voice so this is pretty cool you get to choose what type of voice that you want and in this little video you get to hear the voices so you can choose one and so you're going to choose between voices one through six on this intake form and so you know what the voice is going to sound like you know the name of the avatar but what is that avatar going to look like so i looked through all of these options right and and you know i you know here's one and i thought mm, this doesn't seem like johnny appleseed to me could be but it doesn't seem like johnny appleseed so then I saw this guy and I said, hmm, that seems a lot more like Johnny Appleseed to, for, for what's it, how I view Johnny Appleseed. So, uh, so I ended up choosing option three, but you can see here that there are a lot of options, lots of different demographic choices. And our team is adding more all the time. You know, it's, it could be this guy, I've told them, you know, being being somebody who's over the age of 50, that we need a few more folks in here over the age of 50. So they're working on them. But uh, you can see here that there's just a lot of options to choose from for your patients. And and obviously, we are very sensitive to be, to, to having it demographically rich. So and, and you're going to see more and more options to choose from. Now you've got what we're doing here is we are building out this AI avatar's brain. So how old are they? This is relevant. Now, right now it's limited to 18 to 65, uh, but we will be expanding that. Obviously, a lot of success in this area has to do with building up children. Uh, one that we are working on is, uh, is like a six-year-old boy with uh, ear pain. Um, and then what type of AI are you building? In this case, we're talking about patient sims. So I would click the patient. But you know, within our within our company, we have other types that you can build. And then if you're building a teacher or tutor, you go directly to the do-it-yourself form where we don't have to be involved with these. Uh, we are involved a little bit. And um and you can also share out to the public catalog so that other schools can use what you build as as well. So you you're asked that question. Um, now we need to know what room are they sitting in? Is it a clinic? So let's you know. So this would be a clinic setting, or you could choose you know a, a, a home uh, office for a uh, you know for something that's like uh, Seton Hall with uh, pay counseling or that type of thing. Now, this is really where you start creating the brain of the AI. This is your opportunity to either type in here or um, copy and paste. So, you know, what is the purpose of the experience? And, you know, this provides a little bit more color to that question down here. Down here. Now, what is the patient's backstory? Now, obviously, we all have backstories that could fill an encyclopedia of information, but what is the relevant patient backstory you know for me johnny appleseed he'd fallen and hit his head um he's planted tens of thousands of trees and he just keeps doing it and, and he's concerned about their health and, and so i wrote a whole fun backstory for johnny appleseed then um it asks the patient's medical history so here is where i put in some information about the prescription 
um, and uh, you know the the injury, those sorts of things. And then this just gives you an opportunity to add other relevant information that might not have been included here. So um, some professors, like we're working with Florida A&M, one of America's leading HBCUs, and this professor is having us create 10 patient AIs. And, and so uh, she, had, she had written all of this information, so it's easy to add in there and submit it, which is what she did. And so, um, and then this key statement, this is what uh, we were talking about earlier. Is there something specific that you want to make sure that the patient is saying? So because it's generative AI, it's going to pull from all of this information we put in there, but it's going to say it in its own way. And, and let me make clear that if you interview this patient every day for a week and you ask the exact same question, you will, they're very human-like. If you ask me the exact same question every single day, I'm gonna give you mostly the same answer, but there's gonna be small variances that are different. Might be in word choice, it might be in how long I respond, whatever. It's the same with an AI. So, so every student gets a slightly different response, but it's all relevant to the, to the questions that are being asked. But this gives you a chance to say, okay, I need them to make a specific key statement during the interview. So you type that in here and at some point, um, whether it's triggered or whether it's just random, it's going to make that key statement. And then finally, you want, uh, you know, there's there's some conversational statements that, that might be made. So, you know, is there anything else you want the AI patient to cover before the close of the conversation? And, and so, you know, they will, um, you might say, well, you know, Johnny, that's that's good for a day. We're at time. And then Johnny will say, then Johnny will make sure he adds in that last statement because that is how it's coded. So you can see that it's all very, um, it's all very easy. It's, it's a no code solution and it integrates both the things that you want it to say and generative AI because it's going to think just like a human thinks or at least very similar to how a human thinks and answer these questions based on the information that you put in its brain. Now, sometimes when we talk with professors at universities, they say, this is great, but um, I need something different. You know, I need a different avatar, I need a different room or whatever the case might be. Um, and so they would check this box, I want custom content. And so then we get back with them or they can say, you know what, I built it, it's cool and, and happy to, move forward with it. If obviously custom content um, has an additional fee, for the time being, this intake form has a fee associated with it. But um, on our do-it-yourself form, you will be able to create all the content you want at no cost. And we, again, um, Theo is working daily on this, but we expect this to be ready for you in three to four weeks. If you want to sign up for, to be a beta tester of the custom content, uh, patient SIM do-it-yourself tool, uh, Cassie in the chat box is going to add that in there right now so that you can sign up to be a beta tester. And that, again, we expect that we would be inviting you to join that uh, before the month is out. So now that you've seen this intake form and seen what I did, I'm actually going to show you that video of Johnny Appleseed again. And now that you know how I built it, take another look at how it ultimately deployed. All right, start this over. Hey Johnny, how are you feeling today? So you can see the background I chose. You see he's sitting there on the couch. You can see the avatar I chose. And in a moment, you're gonna hear the voice that I chose. Hello, Doc. I'm doing all right, thanks. Been keeping busy with my trees, you know how it is. How about you? Oh, I'm fine, thank you for asking. Can you tell me more about this compulsion to check your saplings? It's like I can't help it. I feel this deep responsibility to check on them, like they're so that statement, that is what was copied and pasted into his brain on the form. And, and those words that just came out of his mouth, 
Those are not the words that are put into his brain, but his background, he pulled that from uh, his background. And so he's thinking from the knowledge placed in his brain. Depending on me. That is certainly an interesting after effect of the head injury. Yeah, it seems that way. Ever since that injury, the need to plant and take care of these apple trees has just stuck with me. Do you feel like we might need to up your dose on your medication? So the medication piece is that medical background that, that you can add in there. And, um, you know, so, so the user, the student in the class has a, has a summary sheet that they can get uh, and they, in there, it's, is information that they start with. So that they, it's like grabbing the file, your patient file before you walk into the room, you know, your doc always grabs it real quick and reviews it. Um, same thing here, the student reviews the patient uh, file. I'm not sure doc. I feel like the medication helps, but the urge to plan. I'm gonna pause again real quick. So this is provided to students through a web link. It's not a APK, not a program they have to download. It's simply a web link. Now they do have to have a, a, a VXR license to access it, but um, it, it's easily accessible. There's no hardware friction with this product. Plant is always there. You know, Johnny, as long as it's not interfering with your overall day to day, then I think it's fine. I appreciate that doc. Honestly, planting those trees keeps me busy and gives me a sense of purpose. So, uh, professors who assign this to students, they want to be able to grade the conversation, the interaction. So this allows for the, uh, the transcript between the patient and Johnny Appleseed to be turned in as a work assignment. Um, in the future, it will be saved automatically and so students won't have to do it manually. Uh, that's on the short-term roadmap. So you can see this is the conversation between user and Johnny Appleseed, everything that was just said there. And so the, the responses uh, can be graded by a professor. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing that. Um, so I'm gonna pause now and take start taking any questions that you might have. Uh, the things that we're going to put in the chat, the links we're gonna put, first of all, the link to Johnny Appleseed, which should be live, uh, should be back up and running here in a, in a couple of hours. Um, and we'll put in the link to Seton Hall's patient. We'll include the link to the video that you just saw. And we'll also include the link to the intake forms, those links, two actual AI patients for you to interact with, one video and uh, one intake form. So with that, uh, you can, Cassie, what do people need to do to ask a question? Would you provide us some insight on that? Yep, if they raise their hand, I will give them permission to unmute and they'll be good to go. Okay, excellent. What questions do you have that I might answer? Or you can also type them into the chat box and, uh, and I will be happy to answer those as well. Oh, you know what else I wanna make sure I add? Um, Melissa Brent, our Director of Education, who's on this call with us as well, is um is seeding the public library for you to use for your classes with uh 75 uh patient profiles melissa do you mind uh unmuting real quick and just telling us uh sort of what that roadmap looks like and what types of patients these all of these profiles were written um from by healthcare professionals. A lot of them were written by a nurse practitioner who sees a lot of patients, obviously. So Melissa, can you um, uh, help out with that a little bit? Are you still on the call? Yes, I sure am. Um, hopefully you guys can hear me. I'm, I'm in a public facility here to get some quiet, so we'll see how that goes. We have, um, essentially we worked with a nurse practitioner to come up with the 50 we started with most common um, illnesses, just the thing that she sees most frequently at places like urgent care. Um, so we started with that priority list, things like the common cold, ear infections, uh, eye infections, and then we went toward the next 25 um, that were slightly more rare illnesses, but still more commonly seen, things like gastroenteritis, you know, stuff that happens um, that can be, you know, pretty 
well described in terms of symptoms. Um, and what we're doing now is, is building out the relevant models, folks who might have um, visual symptoms, like things that can be actually seen on their model. That's the type of thing that our RT is handling right now. And once all of that's done, we're going to roll them all out. What What do you think is um, our time frame for getting the first of those in the public library? Uh, it's looking like it's going to be the end of next week. I believe, I think Tyler can speak closer to that. I am 99% sure that Jared is jumping in on it already. Good, Good. thank you. And, and so, you know, the important takeaways that I want everybody to take away from this is one, whatever course that you might be teaching or, or that your clients are teaching, you can build your own patient SIM profile to match that so that your students can have a two-way oral conversation or typed conversation with that patient. So, so all of those creator accounts are free. We want you to get in there and create them. You know, for us, we obviously have a business model. Everybody on our team expects to be paid. So our business model is that students have to have licenses and we have site licenses that are as low as $8 per year per student. Um, so uh, you know, our, our standard one-off license is $75 per semester, $150 per year. So, you know, there's a lot of options there depending on how many licenses you might like. But what we would love for you to do is to get in there and begin creating as soon as this creator tool is is live. And, and we are uh, ready to have those conversations with you should, should you want to have those. So I'm going to just open it up for one more minute with questions. If there are no questions, then um, we will wrap it up. But um, I want to make sure that anybody who has a question has a chance to ask one. OK. Don? Cassie, I assume you're opening it up so Don can ask. Don, you're good to go. Hello, good day, everyone. I'm Technic Yomeni Don, yeah, from Nigeria. May I ask a question? Is it possible to have a profile for guidance and counseling so that students can have approach to have a platform where they can interact with a teacher when it comes to guidance and counseling aspects? Can that be done? So, Don, if I if I understand your question correctly. You're asking, can the, um, instead of a patient sim, can you have a teacher or a tutor or a teaching assistant? Is that your question, Don? Sure, for guidance and counseling. Okay, um, the answer is yes. And that's a part of our do-it-yourself tool so that you can build that yourself for free today. Um, let's, Cassie, let's also include the link to the uh, do-it-yourself teacher building uh, sign-up form, the beta sign-up form. So Don, just um, just add your name to that. We will get you an invite to the beta tester and you can begin building your own. Here's the amazing thing too. Um, so let's say that you're in a country that where English is not the primary language. The beautiful thing about this product is that if you speak to it in Spanish, it will speak back to you in Spanish. It it correctly um, understands the language that you're interacting in. So let's say that you have English as second language students. You might instruct them primarily in English, but for clarification questions and for learning, they can um, they can ask those questions later in, they, during the experience in that particular language. So um, we're, we're happy to work with you, Don. We're excited about this uh, the rollout of the beta. Jason, what is your question? You're good, Jason. Hi, everyone. Um, my question is with the um, building with the AI, how can I put this on it? Um, oh my goodness, my mind went blank. It was about getting another 30 seconds. I honestly just, it was. Uh, well, let, let, let me ask you a question, Jason. Um, what do you think would be your most likely use case for either a an AI teacher, tutor, or an AI patient sim? Great. That's basically um, so 
let's say I have a book, would we be able to download the book in, into the AI? Because my question is, will we be able to only type the responses for the students? Or let's say they need to do a book report. And will we be able to put the full book text in there and then the AI can respond that way? It's yeah, so let, let me answer that question. So the answer in short is yes, you can copy and paste information from the book into the brain of the AI. Um, you know, you be careful with, uh, you know, your rights to that information, obviously. But um, as Tyler and Theo would, would tell me, uh, there are limits to how much information you can put in. And, and the reason is because the more data that you pack in there, the longer the latency is between the time you ask the question and the time that you get your answer. So you, the AI, you'll see, always goes like, hmm, yes. they're thinking. And, and so you really want to be efficient with how much data you're putting in there. And, I, and uh, I'm certain that Tyler and Theo actually have a character limit for each one. So, um, you know, the great thing is that, uh, you know, you can eliminate some uh, non-productive words that are in there and, and and really boil it down to just the essential information they need to know. And like, let's say that you have um, 20 chapters in a book. You might want to create 20 different characters, information from each chapter for that character. So let's say, you know, my father was a history teacher. So he taught me uh, Civil War history. Um, I actually had him as a teacher in uh, eighth grade. So um, let's say that we were going through American history and, and Civil War was a big part of that. Uh, let's say that we created one Harriet Tubman and then one Robert E. Lee, one Ulysses S. Grant, one Abraham Lincoln, et cetera, et cetera. Yes. And here's the cool thing. You can assign your students to build their own PBL, project-based learning. So you can say, okay, your assignment this week is to build a patient who has strep throat. Or you could say your assignment this week is to build a, an, a, a tutor or an avatar uh, from, the, uh, from, from the Great Depression. Yes. And so now they, they're going to find somebody and put them in, you know, I'm, a, I'm an Irish immigrant in New York. Here's my experience. Or I am, you know, I am a, a, a wealthy landowner in Iowa. Here's my experience. So that's the beauty of the project project based learning on this. And because creation is free, that opens it up. But again, um, you know, student licenses are are a big deal here for for us. And so, but that's also why we dramatically drove down the cost of these to to make it available to everybody. Thank you. You sure. Everything. All right. So my email, I'm going to put it right in here in the chat. That's mine. So if you have a question, feel free to uh, ask me. If you want to talk with higher education, uh, John at victoryxr.com, uh, Kathleen at victoryxr.com, and Chris at victory xr.com are higher education and then k-12 would be erica at victory xr.com so um we are here to help let us know but we thank you for joining us today and really exciting things ahead please sign up to be a beta tester i think you'll love it i think you'll love creating your own generative ai 3d characters with that we appreciate your time today and uh, we'll see you soon.